Microsoft's AI strategy is turning AI investment into profit. Google CEO says 25% of its code is now AI generated and Google gets the biggest fine in history. Welcome to Hashtag Trending. I'm your host, Jim Love. Let's get into it. There's been a lot of skepticism about whether companies can earn back their massive investments in AI. Microsoft seems to be defying that and appears to have found a profitable path forward. One way they're doing this is by turning away some AI business. They're focusing on AI inference rather than training. Training involves teaching an AI model by feeding it large amounts of data so that it can learn patterns and make decisions. Inference is the process of using these trained models to make real-time predictions or generate results, fine-tuning for real-life action. Inference represents the point at which AI models are actively used in real-life scenarios, such as providing recommendations, completing tasks, or generating content for users. Now, training takes massive amounts of computer resources, and there are limits to which Training takes massive amounts of computer resources, and there are limits to the speed at which even companies like Microsoft can bring new cycles online. So by turning away customers looking to rent raw GPU power for training new AI models, Microsoft is focusing on the more lucrative AI inference workloads, powering popular services and services that often involve their products like GitHub Copilot and Microsoft 365 Copilot. On their recent earnings call, CEO Satya Nadella explained that prioritizing inference is a strategic decision aimed at funding the company's massive infrastructure investments. Microsoft has spent $20 billion this quarter alone on data centers and servers to expand its AI capabilities, with much of that spending focused on keeping up with the soaring demand for its AI-powered products. We're not actually selling raw GPUs for others to train, Nadella said. We turn away that kind of business because we have so much demand for inference. This focus on inferencing rather than training aligns with Microsoft's strategy of leveraging AI for enterprise customers and its own product offerings. Inferencing, or the application of pre-trained models to make predictions and generate insights, is proving to be a more lucrative area for Microsoft. CFO Amy Hood added that the revenue from inferencing is helping generate funds to pay for future model training efforts, creating a sustainable growth cycle for the company. Microsoft's intelligent cloud segment saw a 20% year-over-year revenue increase, reaching $24.1 billion, while Azure and other cloud services grew by 33%. Despite rising costs, about 12% in the quarter, Nadella and Hood emphasized that focusing on inferencing is driving better quality revenue and keeping Microsoft on track for future growth. So where is there not exponential growth? Windows revenue dropped by 2%, and other areas like Office 365 and on-premises server licenses were similarly flat. Not anything to panic about yet, but without the investments in AI and AI processing, Microsoft's earning picture would have been vastly different. So while many tech giants are still searching for ways to make their AI investments pay off, Microsoft appears to have found a winning formula. There may still be an AI bubble lurking out there waiting to burst, but Microsoft has certainly been attacking this strategically. With this and Google's huge growth spike as we saw yesterday, the approach of these two firms, rightly or wrongly, could be a pivotal shift in how cloud giants allocate their resources in the evolving AI landscape. And knocking out another piece of what might be common wisdom, for those who doubt whether AI is ready for prime time encoding, during its Q3 earnings call, Google's CEO Sundar Pichai noted that 25% of the company's new code is now being generated by artificial intelligence. But there is, of course, a catch. Pichai explained that this AI-generated code is then reviewed and accepted by human engineers. As he said, this helps our engineers do more and move faster. While AI is making an impact, it's not as simple as flipping a switch and letting the machines take over. Code may still need human oversight. And this speaks to both the promise and the limitations of AI programming assistants, which are known sometimes to insert errors, infringe on copyrights, and even cause outages and security problems. 
Critics might argue that having engineers review and fix AI-generated code may be more tedious than just writing it in the first place, but Pichai believes that overall, AI speeds up the process, allowing programmers to focus on more complex and creative tasks rather than simple repetitive coding. And what are they doing with that added productivity? The company has rolled out other AI-driven products, such as its newly rebranded Gemini chatbot and its notebook language model, Notebook LM, in particular, to coin the phrase, has gone viral. It was and probably still is an experiment, but it's captivated attention by its ability not just to analyze vast amounts of text and let people converse with the text, but it also turns those results into a podcast with a human sounding voices, providing what our tests have shown to be some exceptionally good analysis. I'm not sure it's, they're gonna put me out of the podcasting business yet, but these things are incredibly good. AI-generated overviews have been integrated into Google Search across more than 100 new countries, though these efforts have faced some criticism for inaccuracy and intrusive ads. But back to the question of whether AI coding is really ready for unassisted production environments, Google's example shows that while AI can indeed generate substantial portions of code, even they are not yet ready to operate without human checks and balances. That said, the fact that AI is now contributing a quarter of Google's code is a notable milestone. And it's another step into a near-term future of coding as a collaborative effort between humans and machines. And another Google story, just yesterday, the tech giant lost its final appeal on a fine in the UK exceeding 2 billion euros. But if you thought that was a big fine, consider the latest move from Russia. A Russian court has fined Google an astronomical 20 decillion. That's 20 followed by 33 zeros US dollars. The fine is for blocking Russian media content and the amount is so absurd that it exceeds the global GDP many times over. To put it in perspective, the World Bank estimates the global GDP at about 100 trillion, which is mere pocket change compared to this fine. Google, it seems, would need all the money in the world and more to pay up. The bizarre amount comes after a four-year court case that began when YouTube banned the ultra-nationalist Russian channel Zargrad in 2020 due to U.S. sanctions against its owner. Following Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022, more channels were added to the banned list, prompting the Russian court to impose escalating fines. You've probably heard the story of an emperor who granted a subject's wish to be paid simply by a grain of rice that doubled for each square on a chessboard and how that final amount to the emperor's surprise exceeded all the rice production in the country. The same approach works with fines that double and compound interest, and Google is now on the hook for a sum described by a judge as a case in which there are many, many zeros. Not that there's any more chance of Google paying that than there was of the emperor paying off that rice bet. Google in Russia has been inactive since 2022 after Russian authorities seized its bank accounts, rendering its operations there effectively bankrupt. Nevertheless, the fines keep piling up and there may actually be a battle to seize any remaining Google assets, which could continue in courts worldwide. While this situation may seem a little absurd, it highlights an ongoing theme for Google. The relentless regulatory attention and increasing fines may eventually take a toll. We're not offering any opinion on the validity or necessity for regulations or fines. But even though Google and other tech companies aren't being fined a decillion dollars, as one U.S. legislator famously said, a billion here, a billion there, soon you're talking about real money. And that's our show for today. Catch our AI panel this weekend as we try a new show idea we're calling Project Synapse, AI in Action. You can reach me at editorial at technewsday.ca. I'm your host, Jim Love. Have a fabulous Friday.